Again, Mr. Camp, seek recognition. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, pursuant to House Resolution 129, I call up the bill H.R. 4 to repeal the expansion of information reporting requirements for payments of $600 or more to corporations and for other purposes and ask for its immediate consideration. Clerk, report the title of the bill. Yeah. Union Calendar Number 6, H.R. 4. A bill to repeal the expansion of information reporting requirements for payments of $600 or more to corporations and for other purposes. Pursuant to House Resolution 129, the amendment in the nature of a substitute consisting of the text of the amendment recommended by the Committee on House, and House Ways and Means is printed in H.R. 705 is adopted and the bill is amended is considered read. The gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Camp, the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Levin, will each control 75 minutes. The chair recognizes the gentleman from Michigan, Mr. Camp. Mr. Speaker, I ask unanimous consent that all members may have five legislative days within which to revise and extend their remarks and include extraneous materials on H.R. 4. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I yield myself such time as I may consume. Proceed. Today the House considers H.R. 4, legislation repealing one of the job-killing tax increases enacted in the Democrats' health care law last year. This legislation provides a pathway to achieving a goal that is shared by Republicans and Democrats in the House and Senate alike, and by the Obama administration, repealing the Form 1099 reporting requirements enacted last year. Before I get into the details of H.R. 4, I'd like to take a moment to recognize and commend my colleague and friend, Congressman Dan Lundgren of California. He first brought this issue to light, and through his hard work, we're here today to vote on a bill that has enjoyed strong bipartisan support. We've been here talking about 1099s before. Some have even gone so far as to say there seems to have been 1,099 votes to repeal 1099s. While we've attempted in the past to repeal this misguided feature of last year's health overhaul, today we turn a corner and move H.R. 4 from the House to the Senate so that it will hopefully soon be sent to the President for his signature. Only then will small businesses and families have certainty that they will not be buried under an avalanche of tax paperwork. In 2010, as one of many ways to finance a trillion-dollar health care law, tax information reporting rules were expanded. These new rules require businesses to issue a Form 1099 for any payments to corporations rather than just individuals and for any payments for property rather than just services or investment income that exceeds $600 over the course of a year. This previously little-known provision quickly became an item of great concern to small business employers across the country. The National Federation of Independent Business, whose 350,000 members support H.R. 4, said this newly enacted reporting requirement would have a direct negative impact on small business. Also brought forward uh, by Mr. T. Berry of Ohio, uh, in September of last year, a Form 1099 reporting requirement was expanded, uh, again, to help pay for the small business lending law. This expansion treats the recipient of rental income from real estate as engaging in the trade or business of renting property. Unless repealed, families and individuals will be forced to fill out paperwork if they do something as basic as replace a refrigerator in an apartment they rent out. The National Association of Realtors, which supports H.R. 4, called this provision not only another paperwork burden, but a trap for all small landlords. Mr. Speaker, neither of these provisions reflects the wishes or needs of the American people. The most important issue on their minds is jobs. Let me say it again, jobs, jobs, and jobs. But despite the call for policies that can create a better climate for job creation, Congress has enacted policies that make this harder. H.R. 4 will accomplish three goals. First, the legislation repeals the expanded 1099 reporting requirements on small businesses. Second, it repeals the new 1099 reporting requirements for rental property. And third, it protects taxpayers by recovering overpayments of taxpayer-funded government subsidies. What that means, and I know we're going to hear a lot about it from the other side today, is that if this bill passes, anyone earning more than 400 percent of poverty nearly $95,000 for a family of four in 2014, and who is ineligible for the exchange subsidies under the 2010 health care law, will now be required to pay back all, not just some, of the improper payments. I'd like to note that this is the same level Democrats used in the original law 
enacted last March. And for those earning less than 400% of poverty, the level of repayment of those overpayments has also increased. This is similar to the path taken by Democrats in December when they adjusted the repayment amounts as a way to finance the so-called doc fix. Now, I noticed yesterday that there was a lot of huffing and puffing on the floor about alleged tax increases in H.R. 4. I want to be sure to clear up any confusion on this point. The Joint Committee on Taxation says in its score that in addition to a $20 billion spending cut, there is a $5 billion increase in revenue to the government from this one provision. But that doesn't mean people are necessarily paying more in taxes. Now, how's that possible? Simple. According to the nonpartisan Joint Committee on Taxation, under the better enforcement rules of H.R. 4, some people won't go into the exchange to accept a taxpayer-funded subsidy because they would be required to pay a larger share or, in some cases, all of the subsidy back under H.R. 4. Paying back money you weren't entitled to is not a tax increase. For example, under current law, a household making $105,000 might think it's worth understating its income or at least not updating their income information in order to receive a $12,000 exchange subsidy because they would only have to pay back $3,000 if caught. But the household is less likely to do so under H.R. 4 because it would have to pay back the entire subsidy given there was no eligibility uh, for the subsidy in the first place. So let's be clear here voluntarily choosing not to enroll in government health care and thus forgoing the associated tax subsidies that one may not be eligible for might result in more government revenue according to the Joint Committee on Taxation. But that is not a tax increase. H.R. 4 is endorsed by more than 225 organizations, including the American Farm Bureau, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, the American Osteopathic Association, and Americans for Tax Reform. Grover Norquist of ATR wrote he was especially pleased about the repeal of the 1099 provisions and that the bill is a net tax cut. That's because despite the claims to the contrary, H.R. 4 reduces federal spending by nearly $20 billion over the next 10 years. It also reduces the deficit by $166 million over that same time. That's probably why the bill is supported by Americans for Prosperity and the National Taxpayers Union as well. And at this time, I'd like to request unanimous consent that the list of supporting groups be entered into the record. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, today we have the opportunity to come together and advance a bill that is a win for small business, a win for families, and a win for taxpayers across America. Cast a yes vote for H.R. 4 and give them that win, and I reserve the balance of my time. What purpose?